Greg McNeely is with us from West Michigan, where we're heard on WTKG, Grand Rapids, and WKBZ, Muskegon, and all those fun places. He's from right in downtown Grand Rapids, political strategist, and now this morning across the street from the Capitol. Welcome. Good morning. How are you? Good. I have a, I, I could delve into all sorts of topics here, but the first and foremost I want to talk about is right next door to where we are right now here, uh, above the Big B, is the Michigan Freedom Fund. That's right. And it looks like there's the potential of a Supreme Court battle that you've initiated with the Michigan Freedom Fund and this redistricting commission. Yeah, absolutely. And I, and I suspect the uh, Supreme Court of the United States will be the final uh, yeah. the word on the subject. So uh, most voters did not know this when they were voting on uh uh, proposal last uh, year, they thought they were voting to get rid of gerrymandering, which is an understandable goal. But what they did is they put discrimination into the uh, Michigan Constitution. And uh, we believe that that's wrong and it's bad public policy and that uh, relatives of uh, political activists should not be discriminated against and be told their voice doesn't matter and that they should be excluded. Generally, we want to use our state constitution to expand rights, protect rights, to provide uh, a greater franchise. Um, and so th- this ballot proposal had some poison pills in it, and we, we need a court to uh, ferret them out. These are the 15 people who will be responsible for drawing the districts, the congressional districts, and the legislative districts in what is supposed to be a, a nonpartisan fashion, right? Right. And but, but what it sounds like is if you're excluding people, other than having a lottery where you pick people at random, Somebody could, could they not gerrymander the actual 15 group? Absolutely. And uh, since we elect our Secretary of State, who is the guardian of this process through a partisan process, uh, it's it's a bit like having the fox guarding the hen house. So we are going to have a gerrymandered uh, commission, uh, given the, uh, the current rules under which it's being devised. Uh, and that's unfortunate, because that means the voters will have been lied to, and they won't get what they... I thought they were voting for. But a lot of that goes to the people that put this up. They were not uh, honest. They were deceitful. And uh, those that weren't, that maybe just believed in the cause, were sloppy and didn't know what they were drafting. Well, the average person might say, so you're excluding people who are aware of politics who draw the boundaries for elections. Right. So is it like you want physics professors or that sort of thing or people who make crossword puzzles, I mean, uh, jigsaw puzzles or... Who do you want? The, the, there's, there's no prescription for what their talent should be. There's no prescription for what their uh, judgment should be. There's no prescription uh, in the, the Constitution uh, that the voters uh, amended that indicate what their expertise should be or how they would contribute to this process uh, other than they, can, they have to be unrelated to somebody who is an activist. Uh, I think we should celebrate activism, left or right, uh, Republican or Democrat, But now the Michigan Constitution, the only constitution in the country that has this prohibition, this kind of discrimination that says just because you're related or you're married to somebody who does care about politics, you don't matter. Your voice uh, can't be involved. That sort of discrimination is on the face of it wrong. It's a violation of the 14th Amendment, and uh, it's morally uh, wrong. And so it's, it's kind of a disgrace now that Michigan has this poison pill uh, that was slipped in when nobody was looking. Do you believe that the way the districts are drawn now is uh, unfair? The current districts, no. Uh, and I understand that uh, uh, people um, uh, look at the shapes and because they don't understand the law, they don't understand that uh, you have to, in order to, to maintain two minority districts uh, in Michigan, that one of the Southeast Michigan districts had to be stretched due to the loss of population in Detroit. If you want to see real ger- gerrymandering, go to California, where you have one district that runs almost 1,200 miles long, uh, wow. uh, and they have an independent commission that made that. Hmm. The independent commissions don't get rid of gerrymandering. It just shifts who's doing the gerrymandering. That's what it sounds like. And, and, and in our form of government, people who are elected at least have some accountability. So that's better. Well, maybe all the way to the Supreme Court. And if that happens, that, that could take years, right? Potentially, I, I think it uh, uh, could take up to twenty-four months. And that, for in that case, they, they would miss the deadline for what they're trying to do now with the commission, right? Uh, potentially, and I, and I suspect that that's what you'll see uh, liberal judges on the lower courts try to do, um, uh, who are also partisan, who are not independent. And unfortunately, as soon as you see uh, what judge is assigned to a case, sometimes you know know the outcome, yeah. and that's unfortunate. 
Uh, you have a long history with our governor, Gretchen Whitmer, uh, uh, adversarial, I guess you might say, sometimes in a fun way. Do you think that uh, now that we've had these debates going on in Detroit and she's been appearing on CNN, that if you were any of the 20 candidates, you would consider her as a running mate? Well, I think, uh, I think first of all, let me say, I think Governor Whitmer is uh, very energetic and uh, out there trying to raise awareness for a lot of issues. I disagree with her on a lot of the solutions, but I appreciate the energy that she's bringing to the job uh, and, and the focus on trying to uh, work with people and get, and get some stuff done. Um, time will tell whether or not uh, she's successful and whether or not she's good. And where she's good, and, and uh, I agree with her, I'd be happy to, uh, to be a partner. But uh, I, I don't suspect she'll be a strong uh, pull for a running mate because w- one part of this process of running for president is being vetted by the national scene. And you know whoever gets the nomination now has 22 other people to pick from that have been vetted by the national scene. Mm-hmm. And so that, that's a leg up in that regard. But I think the governor is a strong contender for the future uh, of the Democrat Party unless they go even further left. And uh, I think she's also a contender for a future cabinet uh, in the Democrat Party. I see. So uh, at this stage, when you have 20 viable candidates, is it likely that the running mate would come from those 20? I suspect so. So, you know, there's huh, until the, the first debate, there was a lot of talk about a Biden-Harris ticket. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure uh, <laughs> uh, that will happen now. Although, uh, as your listeners will recall, uh, um, Reagan picked Bush and uh, made up uh, pretty quickly and brought different coalitions of the party back together in, in 1980 in Detroit at that national convention. So, uh, politics make strange bedfellows, and I still think you could see a Biden Harris ticket. Doesn't Joe Biden, if he is becomes the nominee, he runs the risk of the same apathy that Hillary Clinton ran into, where Democratic voters weren't that excited, so they stayed home. It, it appears that way now. Uh, you know, so it's really interesting. Uh, before the race started, I thought he'd be able to, to unite people and sort of add to their coalition. But he's not able to even bring his base along. And so that, that's proving to be a, a real issue. And he is starting to look like Hillary Clinton. You know, he leads in every poll, just like Donald Trump did in the primary. Uh, but their base is notoriously more difficult to, um, to poll and to figure out, given the rules of their game, how they pick their nominees. I, I think it's still a wide open uh, game. And I think the odds on favorite are actually for Camilla Harris uh, to yeah. end up with the nomination. And but that, then she's got to go pick somebody out. I mean, California's already certain a Democrat uh, win, right? So uh, her math would be different, right? <laughs> Keep in mind, L.A. County has more population than forty-four states. Uh, just keep that in mind whenever the electoral college comes up. Uh, if you really want to see Michigan never have a voice, uh, get rid of the electoral college. One county in our country has more population than forty-four states. So you're dead set against a national popular vote. Absolutely. Absolutely. The, and it's un-American. I mean, p- part of the beauty of our original Constitution was the checks and balances. Remember, we never used to have a directly elected president. Uh, and over time, we've weakened the checks and balances, uh, whether it was the way we elect our president or the way we elect our senators. And I think those are, those are unfortunate changes. Thank you for the visit. Great to see you in person. See you in West Michigan soon, too. Greg McNeely with Michael Patrick Shields, radio stations all across the state of Michigan.